All right, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, I guess I was muted uh, back then, so we start with our afternoon worship. And um, it is a couple who will be leading us in worship. It is Rochelle and James Samson. All right, so let's put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Hi, good afternoon, brothers and sisters. I'm James and my wife, Rochelle. Hi. And uh, this afternoon, we are very thankful that we are able to gather here in this uh, activity recollection. Um, let us prepare ourselves by uh, making the sign of the cross in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy, the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Okay, and before we begin, brothers and sisters, we just want to ask you all to be in a prayerful mode as we begin our worship this afternoon let us feel the presence of God let us feel the Holy Spirit within us and uh, let us uh, um, ask the Lord for forgiveness before we take this uh, praise and worship let us remember our sins ask for forgiveness ask for his mercy as he pours out his blessings upon us this afternoon so brothers and sisters again let us put set aside all our worries set aside all our um, our problems our anxiety and let us focus on the lord this afternoon let us uh, praise him let us thank thank him for all the blessings that he have done for us so brothers and sisters again let us uh, raise our hands and receive God's blessings. Let us adore. Mr. God, we praise you. We glorify you. We give thanks. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Praise your name. Thank you. 
for the organizers of uh, uh, this event, Father in Heaven. We thank you for for giving them the time and the talents, Lord God, so that they can have this event, Lord God, so that we may be inspired, we may be empowered to hear your messages for us, Lord God. And again, Lord God, we are thankful for this community, Lord God. We are thank you, thankful, Lord God, for our brothers and sisters who inspire us, Lord God. And 
also, Lord God, um, we just would like to lift up to you, Lord God, uh, this event, Lord God. We lift up to you all the speakers. We lift up to you, Lord God, everybody who will be attending, Lord God. And we just continue to lift up to you, Lord God, all our loved ones, our families. Lord God, we lift up to you, Lord God, um, ourselves. Lord God, may we continue to have the fire in our hearts, Lord God, to continue to evangelize, continue to learn, continue to have faith, Lord God, continue to trust you more, Father in heaven. Lord God, may your uh, loving grace, Lord God, may your uh, grace and protection always be upon us, Lord God, um, while we attend your your work, Lord God, while we are working for you, Lord God, may you continuously just provide for us, Lord God, protect our loved ones, and uh, be with us, Lord God, equip us, Father in heaven, and, and again, Lord God, we just want to thank you, Lord God, for everything that you have done for us, and we just continue to lift up to you everything, continue to trust you, and to continue to have faith, Lord God, and also, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for everything that you have done for us, Father in heaven, so... As we continue with our event this afternoon, um, we are thankful again for uh, this time and opportunity to to be with our brothers and sisters and to be with you, Father in heaven. And as we end our worship, let us all pray. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and never shall be, well without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes, thank you so much, Father God. Um, we have many things to thank you for. And this includes Rochelle and James, who time and time again lend their talents to give you glory. Thank you, Rochelle and James, and may your blessings be multiplied. So let's continue to move on. And here to introduce Father James Gardner is Nancy. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. As we are full and we're going to continue with our talks, I'm privileged enough to introduce our dear Father Gardiner. In 1961, Father Gardiner took his first vows in the Franciscan Friars of the Atonement, and he is the former director of the Graymore Spiritual Life Center in Garrison, New York. Currently, Father Gardiner is the director of special projects at the Franciscan Monastery of the Holy Land in America, in Washington, D.C. He serves on the Board of Village Care in New York City, the Advisory Committee of the National Shrine of Our Lady of Snows in Belleville, Illinois, and the All Africa Conference, Sister to Sister. During Pope Francis' 2016 visit to the United States, Father Gardiner offered radio commentary for CBS Radio and in 2016, he was the host of the Wilbur Awards for the Religion Communications Council, where he presented an award to the journalist Jane Pauley on behalf of the CBS Sunday Morning Team. So, brothers and sisters, in person and virtual, Father Gardiner. Thank you. Our, uh, oh. Wait. You're good, Father. Am I good now? Okay, yes. thank you. Thank you for unmuting me. And I hope you never meet my sister because she wants to know that trick, how to mute me. But anyway, I, you know, first of all, let me just say my great thanks I, uh, to all of you, not only for the invitation to spend the next hour or so w with you, but also for the good example you give by devoting so much time today and tomorrow for this retreat. Uh, I just think it's an incredibly wonderful thing, and I'm very grateful for the opportunity to, to be with you. And I want to say a special word of thanks to, uh, to Mitzi for getting all this. I think you're the one, Mitzi, who put it all together. You probably have a lot of helpers or a number of them, but to all of you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So let's uh, continue. Uh, keeping ourselves in the presence of God. And this section begin together with uh, the prayer today's for the prayer of today. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you have set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So, uh, a theme. Here I am, Lord. I uh, come to do your will. That phrase uh, first shows up earliest, I think it's in the book of Psalms, and elsewhere throughout the both Testaments, and it represents, I think, a basic human, de human desire on the part of all creatures to do what the Creator wants and remain in the Creator's friendship. It's the other side, if you will, of the theme of our retreat time together this, uh, today and tomorrow that I, I will give you a new heart. That says to me that doing the will of God is eminently possible. But the problem for us is, how do we know what the will of God is for us? How do we discern it? And what I'm, happy to, what I'm hoping to do in the time we have together this afternoon is to offer several observations, factors to keep in mind, things in a toolkit, if you will that might be helpful to us in discerning the will of God in um, everyday life. Let me say that I, I, I want to let you know that I do work, you'll see me looking down, I do work from a, a, a pretty strict out, outline, and that's to keep myself on track and to keep the time. And most of the time when I, when I get a chance to do uh, retreats, I, d I usually do short conferences so that there's time for talk back. I don't have all the answers. I wish I did. I mean, if I did, I would share them. But um, this way, if people have comments, uh, some of the most interesting comments come from uh, men who are deacons. I've had the chance to do their retreat a couple of times. They have to have a canonical retreat before they are ordained priests. And, and, and uh, you know, the, it's the conclusion of their studies. And uh, some of the feedback, some of the com uh, comments that they make are extraordinarily insightful. So, I want to make I want to make it clear that I don't think I have all the answers, that I have all the insights, and I think that in the church today we are especially um, needful of the understandings and insights of those uh, who are not ordained, the lay faithful. So here I am, Lord. I come to do Your will. Now, I have in fifty-two years of being a priest. I cannot tell you the number of times I have been asked this question. How did you know for sure that you should become a priest? Well, I wish I could tell you that I have an answer. I honestly don't. When everyone asks me that, how did I know I was supposed to become a priest? I'm not afraid to tell them that I didn't know that for sure and that I still don't know. Each morning when I wake up, I obviously thank God for yet another day, and I ask God for all the help God can give me to make it a, a good and productive day, a productive day from God's point of view. I also tell God that I hope I'm doing his will for me, and I remind God that if perchance I'm not, it's partially his fault. He should have given me better signs, better direction. I picked that up from reading the Old Testament. Incidents like the time when our forebears were 10,000 strong, were facing a certain defeat at the hands of oh, 40,000 or so Assyrians who were marching on them and crying out from, for help from above, our forebears reminded Yahweh that if they lost the battle, yep, they'd all be dead. But Yahweh would be the real user, loser, because those Assyrians knew that Yahweh was their God, and apparently Yahweh wasn't able to help them. So guess who won the battle? I'm a great believer in this kind of a partnership where some things we push back onto God's plate and say, okay, God, you're next. Now, we have some great examples, I think, in uh, history, in the history of the church uh, to guide us. And uh, the first one that comes to my mind is the experience of the disciples on the road to uh, Emmaus. Uh, 
Seemingly de dejected, they were getting out while the getting was good. That's a phrase my late mother used to use. Uh, the, you won't find that in the, in, in the scriptures. But they had been swept up in the adulation of the crowds. And they had their hearts broken at the crucifixion. All their hopes and expectations dashed in a matter of hours. And apparently reports not only of his rising from the dead, but also being seen, were just too much for them. So they were getting out. And as they talked with one another along the way, you know the story, a stranger draws near, asks them about their conversation, and then proceeds to put everything into place for them in a such a compelling and convincing way that they said that their hearts were burning within them as he explained the scriptures to them. Now, why is this a story so important to us? Two things stand out. First, they obviously knew the scriptures. And second, they had forgotten something. They had forgotten that he had promised to be with them all days until the end of the world. These two things, familiarity with the scriptures and a lively awareness, awareness of the abiding presence of Jesus in our lives and in our world, they form the foundation for the discerning the will of God in our lives. St. Francis of Assisi is a, another good example. You know, in his younger days, he was a bon vivant. Hail fellow well met, toast of the town. Until he went off to war with a neighboring town, got captured and jailed, and had nothing to while away the time except a book of the lives of the saints. And when he was finally released from prison, his formal life was unappealing to him. And he wandered through the countryside around Assisi, wondering what he would do with the rest of his life. One day, he wandered into a little church that had fallen into disrepair. And while he was there, the Christ on the crucifix over the altar spoke to him. Clear as a bell, he heard the words, Francis, repair my church for, as you can see, it's falling into ruin. And looking around, he could see it and he, set, he could see that, and he set himself about the task of rebuilding it, bringing in stone, supplying mortar, anything and everything, in other words, necessary to stabilize and restore it. But he still, he still wasn't happy. All of that changed one day when he encountered a leper on the road, and instead of avoiding the leper, as he had been taught, he embraced him. Still unsure of what this might mean, he returned to the restored chapel, prayed intensely, opened the book of the Gospels, and received the instructions he needed. Go, sell what you have, give to the poor. That course of action had never entered into his mind. But he went ahead and, well, you know the story, attracted followers and found peace and a fulfillment that he had never uh, anticipated. Interestingly, that book of the Gospels is, to believe, is believed to be in the possession of the Walters Art Gallery in uh, downtown Baltimore. Well, knowing this story about St. Francis of Assisi, the founder of my community, a venerable Paul Watson, he was searching for a name for the community that he and Mother Lorena White uh, would found. All the good names, he wrote, were already taken. Jesuits, Jesus, Salvatorians, Savior, Redemptorist, Redemptor, all the good names were gone. So in addition, in an imitation of St. Francis, he was Anglican. He placed his King James Bible on the altar of the little country church where he was serving as pastor. He prayed intensely, and then he opened the Bible three times. One of those times, he would recall later on, his eyes fell upon St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 5, verse 11. Quote, we joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have now received the atonement. The word atonement, he said, literally popped off the page. God had clearly answered his prayers, and so the new community now had a name, the Franciscan Friars and Sisters of the Atonement, together forming the Society of the Atonement.
Now, before anyone might get to thinking that this is a foolproof method of getting prayers answered or, or discovering God's will in particular situations, let me quickly share with you another story. The year was either 1961 or 1962. My classmates and I had made it through novitiate in northern New York State, and we were now in our first year of college. And as so often happens, one of my classmates had great doubts. He was struggling with his vocation. I don't know if I should stay or if I should go home, is the way he put it to me. Things had more or less come to a head for him, and one night after supper, he asked me to join him later that night in the chapel. When I got there, the chapel was dark, but there he was praying his heart out. He had his Bible on the altar, and shortly after I joined him, he approached the altar, closed his eyes, opened the Bible, and placed his index finger on one of the pages, and peering into the darkness at the page where his finger was, he paused and exclaimed, this doesn't work. I couldn't tell from the tone of his voice whether he was angry or dejected or both. So I approached the altar with a little trepidation to see what word his finger had alighted on. And there it was. The word was flee. Get out. Turned out that was not the answer he was expecting, nor for that matter, the answer that he wanted. Without denigrating the singular importance of the scriptures, that's why the Bible is fairly useless in solving particular problems or looking for answers to specific questions. And that's why those Bibles that have lists of questions like lonely, well, read thus and so, uh, worried, read thus, and so, depressed, read, they're not only useless, but they're also misleading. Why? Because the Bible is not an answer book. The Bible is God's word for all ages. And what we need to do is to so familiarize ourselves with the word of God that we begin to think in biblical categories and terms. What I usually advise people to do, people who ask me, is to treat yourselves to a subscription to one of those little publications that offer the readings that the church assigns for each day and make it a practice to read the assigned scriptures prayerfully each day. I myself like to use Give Us This Day, published by the Benedictines in Collegeville, Minnesota. What matters is not which resource you use, but that you get in the habit of listening to God's word with the rest of the church each day. As St. Jerome taught, ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. Now, here's another thing, another element in the toolkit. Practice becoming a better listener. Now, you won't be able to hear God's voice if you're not a listener, not only through sacred scripture, but, but also through the teachings of the church and the cries of the poor. As Catholics, we have incredible resources at our disposal that we, even priests, don't utilize as often as we should. I was reminded of this a couple of years ago when I was serving as director of my congregation's retreat house at Graymore in Garrison, New York. Every year, the monks and nuns at the local Buddhist monastery would invite us, right, invite us with all the area clergy to join them on New Year's Day in an interfaith prayer service for peace. We were each given the floor for four to five minutes, during which we were to include a prayer for peace and a brief reflection. And January 1st, as you know, is World Day of Prayer for Peace. And each year, the Pope selects a theme for that day and releases a corresponding statement. Sad to say, that statement is usually one of the world's best kept secrets, even in our own churches. Several of the clergy each year would incorporate the so-called Peace Prayer of St. Francis. Nice prayer which St. Francis may have inspired, but de de definitely did not write. And what I would do each year was excerpt a paragraph or two from the papal document and add a prayer, usually from the Mass for the Progress of Peoples. And one year, the abbot of the monastery asked me to borrow the Pope's text, as he called it, and when he returned it to me the next day, he said, I hope you realize how fortunate you, you fellows are that you have contemporary teachings like this. I agreed with him, but I was too ashamed to admit that these teachings don't get the attention that they deserve. 
they would get the attention if we train ourselves, all of us, to be better listeners. And when it comes to listening, two other things come to my mind. First, tradition, capital T, and the various traditions, mostly small, the small T, mostly cultural, by which we, faith has been handed down to us. Both are important. Tradition, the capital T, goes hand in hand with scriptures, which is why we always use that phrase scripture and tradition, never scripture alone. But other traditions are also important. And here the example that comes to my mind in many is the many ways in which we have come to appreciate the Blessed Virgin Mary. How fascinating it is, for example, to visit the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception, which is close to where I'm currently living, and to see the various chapels dedicated to Mary. Same Mary, but different facial expressions, different garments, different poses, owned, loved by different cultures. An even better example is the Christmas crash, I think a beloved tradition. Two years ago, before COVID interrupted everything, we hosted an exhibit of Christmas crashes from around the world. They were constructed of everything imaginable, glass, wood, straw, bone, china, antlers, etc. My favorite, I'll admit, was the one that proved to be the most controversial. It pictured St. Joseph taking a selfie with Mary and the Christ child. And there were three wise men clad in the uniforms of UPS, DHL, and Amazon, standing nearby, coming up the path, delivering packages. You know, the crash, as you know, was originally a Franciscan tradition, dating back to the 12th century and to Francis himself. One of his biographers noted that Francis was very concerned that people were losing the meaning of Christmas, and he felt the need to do something special. Those were the words, do something special for the people. So he called his good friend John. These days, we probably could would call John a gopher, as in, you know, go for this, go for that. Called his good friend John to lend a hand, which John did. He located a cave. He brought in hay and an ox and an ass. And how the people gathered excitedly with torches. And the valley rang that night with their songs. But more importantly, the Christ child was reborn in the hearts of many who had forgotten him. That's what time-tested, authentic, culturally appropriated traditions do. They catch our attention and help us to become better listeners to the spirit who is at, who is at work in our world. Active listening, the kind that's required for discerning the will of God, also includes making sure that we are open to hearing the cries of the poor. If for no other reason, then God hears those cries and not only hears them, but also responds to them concretely and creatively. And we're challenged to do the same thing. Hear the cries of the poor, respond to them concretely and creatively. Not for nothing has Pope Francis made hearing the cries of the poor a hallmark of his papacy. And his reminder to put the best intentions that we have into practice are timely. Otherwise, we run the risk of becoming like those who are real good at saying, Oh, Lord, Lord, but who won't be able to enter the promised kingdom because they've done nothing more than say, Lord's Lord, they haven't delivered on anything. Something else I think that comes to, uh, to think about came up in the assigned reading sometime in the past week or so. It's Abram's story from the uh, book of Genesis. Yahweh was pr promising him all kinds of things, but Abraham wasn't Abram at the time. He was having none of it. He had no heir. So he says to God something like, real nice with all these things you're promising me, but what's the use of giving me a hundred-year-old woman, a hundred-year-old man with a 90-year-old wife, all these wonderful gifts if I have no heir to pass them along to? And in response, Yahweh tells him, think big, suggesting to him that he look at the stars and the sky. That's how great your heirs will be. 
One of the problems we encounter when we try to discern God's will for us is that we fall into a trap, a trap of our own making, unfortunately, of thinking either too small or too big. Yahweh chided Abraham for thinking too small. Jesus reminded his disciples that even something small, like a cup of cold water given his name, given in his name, counts. In other words, it's never a good idea to put limits one way or the other on what God might be wanting from us. And along with that, I think, is the reminder to be prepared for more that you ask for. Several times in the gospel, but one time in particular comes to my mind, Jesus has asked the question, which is the greatest commandment? Or in another time, what must I do to be saved? In both of these instances, the questioner got more than he bargained for. This is the greatest commandment, Jesus replied. And before the questioner can catch his breath, he says, and the second one is like it. The same is with that rich young man, the time that he asked his question, what must I do to be saved? Keep all the commandments, Jesus says. And then he, he says, well, I've done all that. And Jesus said, well, go sell what you have, give to the poor, then come follow me. As the evangelists point out, that young man wasn't ready for that, so he walked away sadly. For us, it's never a good idea to put limits one way or another, on what God might be wanting and expecting from us. A final thought, and this again goes back to the early days of the church, specifically to the community at Corinth. In his first letter to him, Paul takes them to task for certain what he calls disorders. It's been reported to me, he writes, about you that there are rivalries among you. And I mean that each of you is saying is, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. And then he gets a little sarcastic. Was Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? See, the issue was for them, it was like pecking order. Who baptized whom? And Paul's solution to the problem he said, well, it's one plants, another waters, but it's the Lord who always gives the increase. That's immediately applicable to the problem at hand that they were having in those days, who was baptizing whom. But it's something that is applicable to everything else we do. Sometimes I think we can get to, get to that age where we get the feeling that we don't know anymore whether we're planting or watering. And I think maybe it doesn't make any difference. But because what we can always rest assured that any increase is the Lord's work accomplished, obviously, with the help of laborers in the vineyard. Therefore, our prayer each day should be that of the psalmist. Prosper the work of our hands, O Lord. Prosper the work of our hands. So if I could summarize this toolkit to go along with the new heart that we're being given. First, grow in familiarity with the scriptures. To ignorance of scripture is ignorance of Christ. Second, increase our awareness of the abiding presence of God in our lives and in our world. Third, listening. How important that is, because is this is a God who has revealed himself as a God who calls right from the very beginning. God called Adam and Eve, where are you? I thought we were going for a walk. Our importance of listening, ours is a God who calls. Fourth, deeds have to accompany words. Words are good, Lord, Lord, but deeds must be accompany words. Five, know our traditions. Know the tradition, the teaching of the church. Know the traditions of culture that have been handed on to us down through culture and family. Six, the danger of imposing limits. Nothing is too big and nothing is too small. Don't do the Lord's thinking for him. And seven, whatever happens, it's the Lord gives the increase. Prosper the work of our hands, O Lord. Prosper the work of our hands. Amen.
Thank you so much, Father Jim, for giving us some of your very precious time and sharing your wisdom with us this afternoon. Uh, thank you also for unpacking the significance of that one line, I come to do your will. You know, your toolkit is a start for us uh, who want to uh, get clarity, understanding God's will. And getting to that state definitely requires an investment of time, developing a relationship with Christ and having a sensitivity to his proddings. So we, we look to Jesus Christ because his, his very own example of obedience to his Father, you know, is, is uh, paramount. And without Jesus' submission and obedience to the Father, I guess the trajectory of mankind would be so different. And so thank you once again, Father, for all those uh, different thoughts. Um, I was busy taking down notes. And uh, as we... Don't publish it. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. <laughs> so as we end on that note, um, we are going to prepare for um, the chaplet and the litany and the rosary. Thank you. I got to run. Thank you, Father. All right. God bless everybody. God bless you too, Father. And with that, dear uh, sisters and brothers, uh, we have somebody who is going to share with us some of her thoughts about this uh, particular line that uh, Father Jim spoke about. And that person is a uh, Tuesday Coronel. Thank you, Tita Nitsi. And good afternoon, sisters and brothers. Um, what a privilege it is to be here um, to share and it is such a beautiful um, movie that Tita Mitzi showed um, about Jesus the one who ultimate the perfect example of one who did the Father's will here I am Lord I've come to do your will into your hands Father I commend my spirit and I wish, like I think like most of us, like all of us, we would want to be like Jesus. That's what we are called to be, to be perfect like Jesus. But um, as Father Gardiner said, um, and I was really struck because in, in, in this sharing, I thought that I really have nothing, um, nothing extravagant to share. Um, my stories are, you know, I guess very light compared to some dram other dramatic stories of doing God's will. But my story is just the little yeses that I, I, I share or I do throughout my life. And I was struck when Father said, do not put limits either way, be it small or big, do not put limits to what the Lord can do for your life, to um, your yeses to the Lord, to your saying, here I am, I've come to do your will. So here I am. I've come um, to do the will of the, of the Father to share with you my little yeses, and hopefully it inspires um, all of us to, to really follow him. Um, I am Tuesday Coronel. I was born into a community, um, into a prayer group back in the Philippines. I was born into this culture, and since I was little, I've always had that desire to do God's will. I've always had that desire to serve in whatever way and um, the things that I wanted to do um, to serve is I've always looked up to singers I've always looked up to lectors those who give good talks um, those who speak really well and those are the desires in my heart and I wanted to serve the Lord that way I also wanted to serve creatively by dancing and theater and um, creative evangelization but there was a problem I was very shy um, as a young girl I I did not talk too much um, I I did not know how to express myself because I was very very shy my parents actually my mom brought me to my grandmother's beauty salon she owned a salon so that I would learn to talk and be with people um, it was that bad but I had the desire in my heart even if I did not have like what seemed to be I didn't have to be the skills to do it when I was 12 years old um, 
I opened um, the Bible. I had my prayer time. Um, because growing up in community, I learned to have prayer time in a very at a very young age. And this is what I opened the Bible to. I'm, yeah, I'm one of those who opens the Bibles and see what God's answer is. And this is the reading I got when I was 12. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you, a prophet to the nations I appointed you. Ah, Lord God, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. The Lord answered me. Say not, you are too young. Wait, let me just... Say not, I am too young. To whomever I, whomever I send you, you shall go. Whatever I command you, you shall speak. Have no fear before them, because I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. And I'm like, wow, that really hit me. Say you're not too young. I will give you the words. So yes, I didn't have the words. I was not bold. I didn't have the courage. But I believed that God, God's got me, that all I have to do is work on that desire. So number one, singing. I wanted to sing. I couldn't sing. Another problem. I was tone deaf. But my father encouraged me, got me like headphones, gave me like vocalization practices. And the impossible happened, I learned how to sing. And now I sing in choir, I sing in music ministry. And it's such a blessing to be able to serve that way. I couldn't speak. I'm, I get nervous, I get um, terrible. Like even right now, I'm shivering, I tremble, I have such stage fright. But then I wanted to be a lector, so I tried. And lector, lecturing, I do that in church now too. So I praise God. And then theater, I'm again stage fright. But I said, you know what? Let me audition anyway. So when I was in high school, I was able to do creative evangelization. The Lord honored the desire of my heart to serve because I just wanted to serve in these impossible ways. But he made a way because he is there with me. Um, and he brought people, the people, to encourage me. And then another thing I wanted to be in order to do God's will was to, you know, counsel. Because I see a lot of, you know, the, the pastoral leaders, a lot of servants who are good listeners, who, are, who give good advice. So I said, I, I wanted to be that too. And maybe I'm not the best one, but it's such a privilege for friends of mine, for those who do not believe in God, to be able to speak to people, um, even at a young age, to speak the word of the Lord to these people, to be able to encourage them, even to stop some of my, um, encourage friends to pray. And some of them have really become um, prayer warriors. And I praise the Lord for that. It is nothing that all I did was desire and spend time with the Lord, read scripture, be surrounded by people who are encouraging, always being aware of the presence of God, listening to Him. And I praise the Lord for this opportunity to share with you um, these little yeses. I hope you can have that in your life as well. Say yes to the Lord. Um, we don't know what's around the corner, but we are sure that he'll be there. And like Father said, he will bail us out or it's we just do our part. He'll do the rest of it. He'll do the rest of it. It's on him. If whether we fail or not, succeed or fail, it's on the Lord's now. Let's just do our part to desire it, to pray, and to act. And that, my, with that, my brothers and sisters, I praise and glorify the Lord. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister uh, Tuesday, for um, making that impromptu sharing. And um, like I said, uh, we have a good uh, 20 minutes before we start the chaplet, but um, we're probably running uh, a good 20 or a half hour early. Sister Jessica? In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. I, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever, shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those who most need of thy mercy. The first joyful mystery is the Annunciation. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those who most need of thy mercy. The second.
joyful mystery, the visitation. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us from our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those in most need of thy mercy. Amen. The third of the joyful mystery is the Nativity of our Lord and Savior. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, 
and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. So glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, as now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those most in need of your mercy. The fourth joyful mystery is the presentation. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, as now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls to heaven, especially those who most need of your mercy. The fifth joyful mystery is the finding of Jesus in the temple, our Father who art in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning, and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious, advocate thine eyes of mercy toward us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life. Grant, we beseech thee, that meditating upon these mysteries of the most holy rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise. Through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thine intercession was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy, hear and answer me. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. 
may God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us. Amen. Amen. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. May the almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon us and remain with us always. Amen. Amen. In the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good afternoon, Amen. Pope. Okay, we will now start with the chaplet. Chaplet of Divine Mercy. You expired, Jesus, but a source of life gushed forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O fount of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gush forth from the heart of Jesus, as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from there you will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. And for the sake of his sorrowful passion, 
have mercy on us and on the whole world. What is Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. 
for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. And for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. The Litany of the Divine Mercy Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Divine mercy, greatest attribute of God, we trust in you. Divine mercy, unfathomable love of the sanctifier, we trust in you. Divine mercy, incomprehensible mystery of the most blessed Trinity, we trust in you. Divine mercy, expression of the greatest might of God, we trust in you. Divine mercy, in creation of heavenly spirits, we trust in you. Divine mercy, in calling us forth from nothingness to existence, we trust in you. Divine mercy, encompassing the whole universe, we trust in you. Divine mercy, endowing us with immortal life, we trust in you. Divine mercy, shielding us from deserved punishment, we trust in you. Divine mercy, lifting us from the misery of sin, we trust in you. Divine mercy, justifying us through the person of the incarnate word, we trust in you. Divine mercy, which flowed out from the wounds of Christ, we trust in you. Divine mercy, gushing forth from the sacred heart of Jesus, we trust in you. Divine mercy, giving us the Blessed Virgin Mary as Mother of Mercy, we trust in you. Divine mercy, in revealing the mysteries of God, we trust in you. Divine mercy, in the founding of the Holy Church, we trust in you. Divine mercy, in instituting the Holy Sacraments, we trust in you. Divine mercy, first of all, in the sacraments of baptism and penance, we trust in you. Divine mercy, in the Holy Eucharist and the sacrament of holy orders, we trust in you. Divine mercy, in calling us to the holy faith, we trust in you. Divine mercy, in the conversion of sinners, we trust in you. Divine mercy, in sanctifying the just, we trust in you. Divine mercy, in perfecting of the pious, we trust in you. Divine mercy, found of help for the sick and the suffering, we trust in you. Divine mercy, sweet relief for anguished hearts, we trust in you. Divine mercy, only hope of despairing souls, we trust in you. Divine mercy accompanying us in every moment of our life, we trust in you. Divine mercy anticipating our needs with graces, we trust in you. Divine mercy repose of the dying, we trust in you. Divine mercy heavenly delight of the saved, we trust in you. Divine mercy, respite and relief of the souls in purgatory, 
we trust in you. Divine mercy, crown of all saints, we trust in you. Divine mercy, inexhaustible source of miracles, we trust in you. Lamb of God, who revealed the greatest mercy in redeeming the world by dying on the cross, spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who mercifully offers yourself for our sake in every holy mass, graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who takes away our sins with inexhaustible compassion, have mercy on us. The mercy of God is above all his works. Hence, we will praise the divine mercy forever and ever. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless, in the treasury of compassion, inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence, submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today I'm in the beautiful city of Krakow, Poland, where for a thousand years it's been the center of art, science, and culture. But for me, it is a place where St. Faustina came as a young girl and started her religious life. Now I'm joined with Sister Salvatrice of St. Faustina's congregation. Sister, with the thousands of pilgrims that come here each year, what is the message that you would like to send them home with? Jesus said to St. Faustina, In the old covenant, I send prophets building thunderbolts to my people. Today I'm sending you with my mercy to the whole world. He said even more, tell Akin mankind that I do not want to punish people, humanity, but I desire to heal it, pressing into my merciful heart. So our Holy Father, he, I would say, responded, yes, and he entrusted very solemnly the whole humanity to the Divine Mercy on August 17, 2002, exactly at this place.
and sisters so um, we are in the next part of the program uh, we are really running early and uh, so we will take a few minutes to uh, go through what we can expect for tomorrow once again on uh, tomorrow's schedule we are going to start at uh, 9 30 for everybody else logging in um, if you can log in a little bit earlier, that would be good so that we can be all set uh, once the program is ready to start. We will have, uh, as usual, a Mass that will be streamed to us from 10 to 11 a.m. This is a Mass that will be, will be celebrated from the St. James Church in Woodbridge. And um, then we will have the talk of Father John. So it's tomorrow's actually going to be a very short day. I believe that um, a little before one o'clock we should be done, and that will also give us, uh, you know, time for the family because I know that Monday is a work day for most people. Uh, so just a reminder: uh, don't log off immediately. Uh, we are going to try to uh, take some pictures while all of you are here, and also. Um, at the end of the program for today, can we request um, all the technical staff and the service team to remain for um, a huddle? All right, that way we can evaluate um, how we did today. In the meantime, um, like I said, we have probably 10 minutes to spare. So I would like to invite uh, anybody who wants to give us uh, a reflection of um, the first two talks that we've had, I would just request that you make the sharing uh, maybe a two minute or three minute the most uh, sharing so that we can, you know, have as much uh, feedback as possible. All right, so uh, just raise your hands if you want to be recognized. And so if you're not able to unmute, our technical staff can unmute you. Brother, <laughs> we don't seem to be able to get the full view. I don't know what's going on.
Can we call one of our servant leaders from uh, the U.S.? How about we call on um, Sister Ethel? Is Sister Ethel around? Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah. Uh, Good afternoon, Sister. Much. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me, Sister Mitzi? Yep. Yeah, uh, it, it, this is such a blessed day for, for everyone, for all of us women here all over the U.S. And I guess it's, it's all over the world. Uh, we had a few members here in Washington. We invited relatives from the Philippines. So it's such a, a blessing to, to be here gathered today. And uh, what wonderful words of wisdom we have heard so far from our, from our speakers. And it's just so inspiring for, for everyone. And uh, particularly, I, I made some notes here uh, from, from Sister Gauja that um, just like what Sister Mitzi said, you know, um, we do not even have time to to come to to Jesus. We can do everything, but uh, lack time to come to Jesus. So um, this is such a good good reminder to uh, for me to put some time to um, be with Jesus um, and to uh, just prioritize prior put him at the top of my uh, priority. And uh, with that, I would um, say thank you to uh, Sister Mitzi and the team in, in the East, technical team, you did a wonderful job. Thank you for all the effort and hard work that you have done. God bless you. Thank you. Um, on that note, you know, I would say that I, I don't think that it ever occurs to us that um, our God would be feeling loneliness, right? We think that it is the purview of us humans that we feel that abandonment, we feel that loneliness, but like Sister uh, Gaudia mentioned, yes, we just need to look at the cynical uh, Gethsemane and then Golgotha and then realize that God in all his humanity, he took that humanity, he didn't take the hurt away. In fact, he entered into the pain so that he could share it with us. And in doing so, he felt the loneliness, he felt the abandonment. And um, I guess if nothing else that we take away from this um, recollection, it is the, the fact that um, maybe we need to uh, rearrange our schedules so that we are able to spend uh, quality time with our God. I think that is really important. And I agree with you, Sister Ethel. Thank you so much. Anybody else that wants to share? Uh, I see somebody raised their hands. Do we have Sister Jackie around? Sister Jackie from Mid South. Yes, yes, Tita, I'm here. Um, I'm here, and uh, I was taking down notes uh, earlier in the talk of Sister Godia and uh, uh, Father uh, James. And my take is when Sister Godia said that uh, I was struck when he she said that. Everybody has time for everything, but none really for the Lord. And as you said, uh, it, it's kind of, uh, you know, important that when we spend time with Jesus, we're concentrated and we're focused on him. And it's a quality time that we give uh, to Jesus as well. And one other thing that uh, Sister Gordia also mentioned is the book of uh, uh, St. John Paul II on the meditation of uh, givenness. When you ask yourself, uh, when the question asks is, can one man say to another, God has given you to me, 
So every person is really important. It's not because one is famous or one is rich or one is successful. I think everybody that we meet in ordinary lives, when we go to the store, when we go to work, we have to consider that uh, everyone else is uh, very important. And those are the things that, um, you know, I wrote down that I want to, you know, uh, think more about. And it's very, it's a very important reminder to us. Thank you. Yes, I, I, I agree with you. Uh, I also looked into that uh, during the break because I was not familiar with that writing of um, St. Pope John Paul II. And um, it truly is uh, amazing that God puts in the ecosystem where we live, in the environment where we live, God puts the people that he knows are going to be important in our lives but we just need to go beyond our earthly expectations and see why God put these people around us so that we can appreciate them so that we can work with them so that we can thrive with them you know so that we can help one another and uh, yes please if you get the chance please look this up the meditation of givingness um, it was written by Pope John Paul II so yes thank you so much Jackie who else would like to share sister Maribel where is our sister Maribel Uh, Sister Laverne has been raising her hand. You might want to call her first. Okay. I don't her hand was raised uh, since earlier. Okay, I don't see her. Uh, Sister Laverne, if you can unmute yourself, uh, please do so. Thank you. Um, thank you for allowing me. And I must say, I feel truly blessed to have been invited to this um, retreat today. And what Sister Gaudia had said had really stuck out to me and that when she's with, with what she said about we always have time for everything else. But like as I always share with my other sisters, when we put God first, things fall into place. Even when we are not understanding and that was one of the reasons why today, yes, I had other, uh, so many other st things to do on my schedule today because of the fact that I work during the week. But I had to, and that's the reason why, as, as you can see, I am, I, I end up logging on twice because it's on my phone and on my laptop because I didn't want to miss anything. So um, what, what stuck out to me is that, like what Sister Gordia said, the loneliness. And, and I could remember one time going through that time and sometimes you do not understand what God is doing with our lives. You can be in a crowd and you could still be lonely. And likewise, you could be alone. You could be alone, but not lonely. You know, it, 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 it was so resounding to me with what she shared. And I, uh, I feel truly blessed with, with so many of the things that she said I was, as I was taking notes, you know, it, I wish I could have just had a recording for myself just to go over it again. It's just so rich with, with information for us to, to ponder upon and to increase and grow in the things of God, in our walk with God, in prioritizing and doing God's word, as in seeking him first, the kingdom of God and his righteousness, that all, he didn't say some, that all these things and all these things will be added on to us. So I just want to say thank you so very much, Sister Gaudia, for taking time out of your occupied schedule to, to share with us today. God bless you and bless you, my sisters. Thank you so very much. And um, with Father James, with what you're saying is, um, let me see what my notes are saying. Is it about being the child of uh, uh, discerning God's will for our, for our lives. That was another part that stuck out with me. So, you know, 
it helps me so very much. As I said, I'm going to continue to go over my notes that I have written here. I just want to say thank you for allowing me to share some of my thoughts. God bless you all, sisters, and thank you so very much. Yes, thank you so much, Sister Laverne. And uh, you did capture so many of the uh, things that Sister Gaudia mentioned during her talk. And uh, I know that uh, we are all enriched on account of uh, Sister Gaudia's uh, talk today. And uh, that is indeed a blessing. Thank you, and uh, may you be blessed too. Now, I would like to announce that um, Sister Gaudia, in the beginning of her talk, she mentioned that if there are questions, uh, so did uh, Father Jim. He said that he wanted feedback. So I have typed my email into the chat box. And um, if you guys have questions that are directed towards the speakers that we have today, uh, please uh, direct it to that email that is in there. And I will make sure that um, it gets uh, sent out to the, to the proper person and we will try to get back to you with answers. All right. Um, I don't know how uh, fast we can do that considering that our speakers are all very busy. They're also occupied with a host of other different things, but we will do our best to get your questions to them and to get back to you. Okay, it seems that my email did not go through. I will uh, post it up shortly again. I must have just posted it to somebody's um, name. So we will do that again. But um, it is 3.56. Uh, Father Chris is scheduled to go on at 4 o'clock. So we are right on the money here. Has anybody seen... Uh, Father Chris logging in. He is in, Tita Mitzi. Thank you so much. Welcome, Father Chris. Thank you. So, our next speaker is none other than Father Chris Aylar. So, Father Chris belongs to the congregation of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. Now, uh, this is the very same congregation that was entrusted with spreading the message and devotion of divine mercy. And Father Chris entered as a postulant in July of 2006. So prior to that time, he received a Bachelor of Science in Industrial Engineering and a Master's of Business Administration from the University of Michigan. And after working as an engineering manager at a large automotive uh, supplier in Detroit, he began his own consulting firm in Charlotte, North Carolina in 2000. Now answering the Lord's call, he attended the Franciscan University of Steubenville in Ohio for his philosophy studies, the Dominican House of Studies in Washington, D.C. for his theology studies, and he earned his Master's of Divinity degree from the Holy Apostles Seminary in Cromwell, Connecticut. So Father Chris wrote and produced the popular Divine Mercy 101, and you probably also see him on YouTube. He has so many things uh, that are in YouTube. And he also uh, authored Explaining the Faith DVD series. He also authored a best-selling book, after suicide, there's hope for them and for you. He is an internationally known speaker and a regular host and guest on EWTN. And he also hosts the online Divine Mercy Matters series at divinemercymatters.org. He currently serves as Father Joseph, the director of the Association of Marian Helpers. And he is the head of Marian Press located in Stockbridge, Massachusetts home of the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy. So without further ado, here we have in person, over the screen, Father Chris Aylar. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, can you all hear me? Um, 
So, Mitzi, are you my go-to person if I need a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Yes, if, uh, I am. Okay. Let's begin with the prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, thank you, everybody, for letting me be here with the Missionary Families of Christ Uh you guys, uh, I love the fact anytime I can spread the word of divine mercy, and um, we invite you to join us. Uh, EWTN has asked me to host a new show starting September 1st, and uh, it'll be on every Wednesday night at 6.30 uh, Eastern Time. <clears throat> so I see some of you are in New York and New Jersey. So it would be Wednesday nights at 6.30 <clears throat> starting September 1st on EWTN. So we hope that you guys can join us um, as the show's called Living Divine Mercy. And um, we're super excited about it. So anyway, am I okay to begin now? Or uh, should I, should I kind of start? Are there any other questions? Does anybody have any questions? Uh, we'd love to be able to answer them if you guys have any questions before I begin. I think you're good to go, Father. Okay. They've been raring to hear from you. All right. Well, first of all, we're talking about St. Faustina. And St. Faustina is, um, and all I'm going to do too, if I can test this, I'm going to try sharing my screen um, and see if you guys tell me, because I might want to show some videos here or some, uh, some um, let's say, uh, uh larger print um let's see if this can you guys see that on the screen yes i'm sorry yes we can father. Yes, father. okay so you can see here this is saint faustina her life and her spirituality and this is going to be kind of the heart of what we do here so what i'm going to do is go back and forth to this screen from time to time. Now you're back to seeing me now, right? Yes. Okay. All right. So basically the key to St. Faustina um, is basically knowing, and you've heard me talk about this before, uh, basically what Adam and Eve messed up in the garden was not trusting. Um, you know, they didn't ask for God's mercy. They weren't merciful to each other, but the key is they didn't trust. And we're going to get into trust in a little bit. But basically what happened was God gave mankind this, these what we call the ABCs, which are ask for God's mercy, be merciful to each other, and completely trust in God's mercy. And this is this simply, without a doubt, the issue that Adam and Eve didn't get right. Okay, so Adam and Eve didn't get this right. This is the message of divine mercy. A is ask for God's mercy, B is be merciful to each other, and C is completely trust in God's mercy. They didn't do this. Now, what happened? Okay. To take an essence, um, basically what we have here is God tried to give that message to the whole world. And he kept trying to raise up saints and prophets and and people throughout history, but he did not he did not give up on mankind, but yet mankind gets all the way to the 20th century. And finally he says, You, Saint Faustina, will be the person I'm gonna use to make a absolute example of why I want to help make it to the world this message, this ABCs. Now, if I can ask on the screen right now, are you seeing me or ABCs? You. Okay, so this is not working. <laughs> All right. All right, so you're back to seeing me. All right, so I'm going to go back to a shared screen here. And if this doesn't work too well, I'm going to have to probably cancel this. But let's try it one more time. All right, so St. Faustina is 
a saint that he raised up, God raised up into the 20th century. And this is her picture. This is an actual picture of St. Faustina. All right. And basically, then we did a painting of her out of that. And this message that Jesus gave to uh, the her to give to the world, we best known by Finch. We call it the devotion of divine mercy. It's easy to remember. It's a little acronym, F-I-N-C-H, for the feast of divine mercy, the image of divine mercy. N is the novena of divine mercy. C is the chaplet of divine mercy. And H is the hour of mercy. This is her house. This is her actual house that she lived on 12, 12 acres on a little rural farm. And her dad was a peasant farmer. And she her job was to break up dirt clods, uh, literally. And um, her dirt clod job, if you will, was um, something that she grew up tasting hard work and you know, um, what it was to be poor. She was born in 1905. Her, uh, her real name was Selena Kowalska. Um, and she was a third of 10 children. Um, so basically, you know, she grew up poor. Her sisters had to share one dress so she couldn't even go to mass on a regular basis. But she was mystical, even at a young age. She had her first experience um, with God at age seven. And so this is how powerful, um, you know, God's relationship was with her. And um, I think what, what a lot of people don't realize is that she, at this very early age, was um, in communication with God. Then by age 19, in 1924, she went to a dance with her sister, Natalia, and she had a vision where Jesus appeared to her. And he asked her, he said, how much longer are you going to make me wait? And she took that to mean that he wanted her to join a convent. So she obeyed, even against her dad and her mom. And she went to a cathedral to, play, uh, to pray. And Jesus told her to leave for Warsaw. This is in Poland. The next mornings to join a convent there. So she did. She packed a bag. She didn't know anybody. And she went without permission of her parents, not knowing anybody in Warsaw. And she gets there. So she goes right into the Church of St. James, where I was. And um, she decided to go approach these convents. And now none of the convents accepted her because, you know, she was poor. She didn't have a large dowry. And they said, basically, we don't accept maids. And, uh, you know, talking about her poverty and her lack of education, you know, she didn't really read and write. She only had three years of, ed, you know, formal education. Um, but anyway, she met one mother superior at the uh, Sisters of Our Lady of Mercy. And this was in Warsaw. And uh, she said to her that we'll conditionally accept you if you can earn money for your habit. Mm -hmm. And so now we're in 1925 and she goes out and earns money. And she came back in 1926 at age 20 and she received her habit. She took the name a sister Maria Faustina of the Blessed Sacrament. Now, what does Faustina mean? Faustina means fortunate one or blessed one. Um, and that that's important because she certainly was. She was she was things like a cook. She was a portress, meaning she opened the door. She was a gardener. Um, she lived in eight different convents. You know, some of the sisters didn't like her. Uh, others went to her for advice. So the whole time Jesus is planning on using her. And then on February 22nd, 1931, Jesus appears to her in her cell in Płock, Poland. And this is powerful stuff because how he appeared to her um, in, in, in essence was the image of divine mercy. And if we can see if I can get this up here right now. Um, so we're going to show you on the screen if I can get it. I'm going to share the screen one more time. All right, let's do this. 
and hit share and go here. Yay. You can see the image of divine mercy, right? This is how Jesus appeared to her in her cell in Plotsk. And what's fascinating about this image is it's got the whole Paschal mystery in it. You know, you've got Holy Thursday because Jesus is uh, dressed as a priest and he institutes the Eucharist and the precious blood. You have Good Friday in this image because the wounds of the crucifixion are in his hands and feet. You have Easter Sunday because Christ is resurrected. He's in his glorified state. You have the ascension because Jesus' right hand gives a blessing, like he blessed the people before he ascended to the Father. You have Pentecost because 10 days after ascension, Jesus um, uh, sent, the, or God sent the Holy Spirit down upon Mary and the apostles in the upper room and showered blood and water as the birth of the church. And then finally, look at Jesus' left foot. It's stepping forward. And in that, we see Jesus telling us, I'm coming to you, just trust me. And I think this is powerful because in that, Jesus appeared in person. You know, this wasn't just... Um, a mental vision. Um, you know, Jesus was really there. Um, and he told St. Faustina that divine mercy is mankind's last hope of salvation. And now is the time for mercy. <clears throat> and so her confessor didn't believe her. So he had her, you know, evaluated and asked Faustina to write down everything in a diary. And what's interesting was she was you know, not sure she didn't read or write real well, but she wrote everything down in this diary. And we can see here um, in this, you know, image of Divine Mercy um, that she wrote about it in this diary. If you don't have the image or excuse me, the diary of St. Faustina, this is it right here. This is the image of the uh, a picture of the diary of saint faustina where she recorded all of this down here's her uh, uh her confessor blessed michael sapochko who had her copy everything down which basically gave us the diary and uh, so now i think what we need to realize is that god's using her you know and jesus said don't hide anything from your confessor and this confessor told her to write everything down in a diary and um, this is why she was known as the Apostle and Secretary of Divine Mercy. But anyway, uh, she ended up having that image painted in 1934. Her, her confessor uh, set her up with an artist named Eugene Kazmorowski, who actually lived in his house. And they worked together to paint this image, who Jesus said, paint this image of the pattern you see before you. And um, basically, many promises were given to those of us who venerate the image. Or if you hang the image in your home, you really want to hang this because there's a lot of stories about houses that whole neighborhoods were wiped out by war or disaster. And all the houses were destroyed except houses that had the image of divine mercy. And so in 1935, they released this image on Divine Mercy Sunday. And uh, Jesus also gives St. Faustina the chaplet, which is praying for, um, you know, atonement for our sins and the sins of the whole world. Um, but, you know, the whole time Satan was harassing her. He appeared to her as a pack of dogs, once disguised as an angel. Um, but Faustina was given some power, too. She could bilocate. She could read souls. Um, and Jesus, you know, he accepted her suffering uh, or prepared her for suffering and gave her a choice if she wanted to take it or not. And she suffered tremendously. Um, you know, she offered those sufferings to atone for the sins of others. Um, you know, she shared in a special part of the cross of Christ. And, you know, God's plan sometimes has us suffer. And um, she got the, a spiritual stigmata, which is the wounds of Christ. 
And, um, you know, this was all part of her, her growth. So anyway, um, <clears throat> you know, God gave her a lot of consolations. Um, like, you know, she had a seraphim angel bring her Holy Communion and, and um, she actually saw her own canonization where she saw St. Peter, you know, whisper into the ear of the Holy Father, which was Pope John Paul. And then they announced Divine Mercy Sunday, you know. Um, and so she did a lot. And before she died, she predicted that there would be a terrible war. And um, to pray, she said, pray for Poland, pray for your country. And then she died on October 5th, 1938, which is her feast day. Now, she did say, interesting enough, that my mission is not going to end when I die. It's just going to begin. And, um, you know, some of the bishops noticed that what she predicted was coming true, like the Great War and all this and that. So all of a sudden, you know, people start paying attention and, um, you know, uh, you know, the bishop allowed public access to the Divine Mercy image. And in fact, one of our priests, Father Joseph Yarzhambowski, uh, printed some of these prayer cards and came to the United States. And he got through going uh, through Russia and Japan, getting to the United States with expired paperwork. He didn't even have a good visa. And... Um, it was a miracle. And um, and so he came here to the United States in 1941. And by the end of that year, we here in Stockbridge started printing and we were printing millions of prayer cards. And you know where those prayer cards reached was the Philippines. In World War II, some of the soldiers took these prayer cards back and started passing them out. And the Filipino people, God bless you, um, you responded. And that's why I said in my talk today, I did a talk on, if you, if you can get onto YouTube, I did a talk on the Crusades today. And if you can get to that talk, I talk about the Filipino people. And, you know, I said clearly that I think there's two chosen people today. You know, um, the Jews are the chosen people uh, that were chosen by God to educate the world about monotheism, that there's only one God. That was their job given by God. Teach the world, I am one God. In, 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 and they did that to an extent. But what really interested me is today I believe there are two new chosen people because the Jews, the original chosen people, they didn't finish their job. They rejected Jesus. So God is looking to raise up, in my opinion, a new chosen people. And I believe those two chosen people are from Poland and the Philippines. And the reason I believe that is because Jesus made it clear that he was pleased with these two nations. And why? Because of their faithfulness. But what happened? Well, in World War II, no nation suffered at the hands of the Nazis more than Poland. Yet no nation remained more Catholic than Poland. And so I believe Jesus gave them the reward of having St. Faustina and Divine Mercy come from Poland. Poland that says in the diary is the spark by which uh, this message of Divine Mercy, which will prepare the world for Jesus' final coming. It says the spark will come from Poland to prepare the world for my final coming. So I believe Poland is chosen because they are the spark that gave us John Paul, St. Faustina, the diary, the feast, the image. But then I believe there's got to be a way that you spread that message. And this is where the Filipino, mainly the Filipino ladies, come into play. Because while no nations suffered under Nazi Germany more than Poland, and no nation remained more Catholic than Poland, you can say the same about the Philippines. 
No nation suffered at the hands of Japan in World War II more than the Philippines. Japan was ruthless on the Philippines. Yet the Filipinos never lost their faith. And I believe God is rewarding them by saying, okay, this divine mercy thing that comes out of Poland, I need to be able to find somebody to spread it. And that's the Filipino people. The Filipino people are the ones spreading this message of divine mercy all over the world. Everywhere I go, there's Filipino nurses um, spreading, praying the chaplet. God bless you all. You know, uh, definitely missionary. Talk about missionary families. That's being one. And so um, I believe our Lord gave this mission to the Filipinos. And, you know, please join our Association of Marian Helpers. You can visit us at micprayers.com. And sign up to be a Marian Helper. There's no cost. It takes 10 seconds. And you can share in all these graces that came over with our priest, Father Jorzembowski. And he helps get this message out there. So share in it. Become a member. You know, um, a lot of people say, well, Father, isn't this banned or condemned? No. Uh, in 1959, there was a temporary ban because of a faulty translation. But we've gotten that cleared up. And John Paul said there was a special mission for St. Faustina. That he said this was some poor girl, nobody from nowhere, that God entrusted the mission of announcing to the world the most important message of the 20th century. And that is powerful. And so we see God using St. Faustina um, to get that message out there. And um, this message is glorifying the mercy of God, pleading for God's mercy for the world. And, you know, if you say, what is her Faustina's spirituality? Trust and mercy. Um, she had total trust because God asked her to do something she couldn't do. You know, he asked her to paint an image, but she wasn't an artist. He asked her to spread the feast of divine, or the message of divine mercy around the world, but she had no money. Um, he asked her to start a feast, but she had no influence in the church. Um, so he gave her no real help, but yet held her accountable if she didn't do it. And this is why I think people turn to her as an inspiration. Um, you know, we'll pray, pray for her to become a doctor of the church. But basically, she wrote about mercy and trust, and encouraged other people to trust in her. Um, this is the entire message of the diary and of uh, the Bible, which is really clearly known as trust. You know, John Paul um, said, be not afraid. You know, be not afraid appears 365 times in the Bible. Um, we're not supposed to be afraid. You know, Satan wants to get you scared. You know, pride, fear, and confusion. That's, that's who Satan is, right? But this entire diary in the Bible is about trust, you know, overcoming fear. You know, um, St. Faustina said in Diary 78 that one act of trust gives greater glory to God than hours of prayer. So if somebody said, well, Father, what is trust? I want to know how to trust. I don't know how to trust. Trust is simply accepting the help that someone gives you. If I trust you and you give me directions to find a restaurant, I'm going to follow them because I trust you. I'm going to follow the help you offer me. But if I don't trust you and you tell me, go here, I'm not going to go. I need to trust you. And that's what the diary and the Bible are all about. Trust is the expectation of somebody's help and using it, acting on it. So how did God give us help that we need to trust him? Uh, right in the garden, he gave us the gift of a mother and the promise of a savior. And so the promise of a savior and the gift of a mother were right given to us right in the garden. We just have to trust. And that was Adam and Eve's problem. They didn't trust. They, um, they uh, ABC, C is trust. They, they blamed each other. 
And so that, you know, sin wasn't their problem. Not trusting God was their problem. You know, they didn't believe God. They thought he was, the devil said, he just wants to ruin your fun. He doesn't want you to be like him. And um, this is really important. Um, you know, they didn't believe God. And the serpent distorted God. Uh, says, you know, um, you know, he didn't say this, did he? You know, and um, and this is this is important because we seek things that will never fulfill us. Um, and only God. Yeah. Why you have to give me that? Why not just a gift? Okay. Are we okay? Yes. Sorry about that, Father. Oh, should I? Should I? Well, you know what? Is this a good time for questions? Um, how, how about any questions? If anybody has, um, you could chat them, or I could. Uh, you could just unmic yourself and ask any questions. If anybody has any questions so far before I finish, anybody? Okay. It's an unintentional interruption, Father. I okay, that's fine. Okay, so I'll finish up here. Now, the whole basis, though, is Satan wants us to distrust God. He's not your father. He's a lawmaker. He doesn't want, he doesn't trust you. You don't trust him. Um, you know, we, we seek our trust in other places and goods or people, not our creator. Um, you know, we become uh, fearful. And, you know, fear is the number one reason why people don't go to church. Um, you know, it's really weird that, you know, Abraham trusted, even to the point where he's willing to give his son. You know, um, Mary's the mother of trust. You know, she accepted the Annunciation, the role that God wanted her to play. And we can accept trust through Mary. She's a gift. Remember, trust is accepting that help somebody offers you. Uh, and Mary didn't fear when she, you know, when she only had trust that what God said to her would come true. Um, you know, God gave us a mother because he knew we'd be afraid. And who did we run to when we were children? Usually our mother, <laughs> right? Um, I ran to my mom because I was afraid of my dad. And God knows that we're broken. Um, you know, I was afraid dad would be disappointed in me. So I would run to my mom and she would assure me that everything was okay. And I had no reason to fear. And um, so Mary truly is this important role and what is Mary in consecration is entrusting yourself that she'll help take you to her son. You know, um, ask her to help you, um, you know, show you God's will. You know, um, this is important. Um, you, know, um, you know, we don't trust God, so we remove him. And that's what evil is. Evil is not an actual created thing. Evil is a lack of something. It's... It's um, it's not uh, it's not believing that God is going to help us. So this fear causes us to lose our trust, and you know trust needs to be strong, and um, you know we need to you know not fear uh, Satan because he doesn't only have power what God gives to him, and so uh, let us not fall into that trap, you know. Um, you know, Jesus told St. Faustina, let's see if I can pull this up here. I'm going to try one more sheer screening here. All right, let's see if I can do this one. All right. Can you guys see that? St. Faustina said, Jesus said to her, my child, know that the greatest obstacles, actually, you know what, I'm going to go back one. Um, Jesus said to Faustina, Pray as much as you can for the dying. By your entreaties, obtain for them trust in my mercy, because they have most need of trust and have it the least. That's important. That's the dying. They're not trusting. 
And so he says, be assured that the grace of eternal salvation for certain souls in their final moment depends on your prayer. Wow. If that isn't a wake-up call, you know, our loved ones are depending on our prayer. And that's why Jesus, St. Faustina said uh, that Jesus told her, my child, know that the greatest obstacles to holiness are discouragement and an exaggerated anxiety. This is what trust is. Get rid of that. Um, you know, get rid of those, um, those fears. That's what it's all about. Um, you know, this is a very important message that God doesn't want us to forget. And, um, you know, a lot of people have. And so, you know, Maria Sima, um, you know, told us in one of the mystics, that, you know, we we need to trust God, but we still need to pray for those people that we've lost because in trust is hope and in prayer is hope. And so very, very important. You know, if we worry too much, um, we're not fully at peace with God's will. And, you know, doing God's will and not our own will will bring happiness and salvation. So, what sin is, is cutting us off from that grace, you know, and um, I think it's very important because Jesus said, you know, that um, we have, um, you know, we all want to get to heaven, right? And in order to get to heaven, you got to have grace. And Jesus told St. Faustina that trust is the vessel by which all grace is received. And so you want to get to heaven? I want to get to heaven? You need trust. And, 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 and uh, well, I guess you could say you need grace. But how do we get grace? This is given by God as a free gift. But trust is the vessel by which all grace is received. So you, you got to have like this heart that opens up and says, okay, God, flood me with grace but you got to catch it. You got to catch that grace. And how do you catch that grace is trust. And so, um, you know, many people don't understand that God um, is giving us the opportunity by just accepting his help, you know, and St. Faustina, you know, she pointed this out. Look at two more of her quotes um, that I'm going to put up on the screen for you. Because these are, these are important quotes, and um, they're talking about the need for trust. And let's look at this here. Um, Lord, St. Faustina said, I do not ask that you take me down from the cross, but I implore you to give me the strength to remain steadfast upon it. And St. Sebastian Valfrey said, when it is all over, you will not regret having suffered, rather regret having suffered so little and suffered that little so badly. And so when I look at Jesus' message, it can be summarized here. I desire trust. Let the weak, sinful soul have no fear to approach me. For even if it had more sins than there were grains of sand in the world, all would be drowned in the unmeasurable depths of my mercy. And this is powerful. And here's the quote that I think, um, the graces of my mercy are drawn by means of one vessel only. And that vessel is trust. The more a soul trusts, the more it will receive. So, you know, I kind of look at it this way, guys. You remember the wedding feast at Cana? And the whole story is about an empty vessel. And Mary points out that the vessel is empty. And what happens? Jesus fills it. And so you got to empty yourself like, a, like the uh, jar at Cana and let God fill it with himself. The wine is the Holy Spirit. And, and, and let him fill you so that you then are that empty vessel coming to God and saying, I trust, fill me. And God will fill you just like those vessels at, um, uh, at Cana. 
And so, so much of this, you know, God may seem silent, you know, but he's never not with us. Um, this is this is the message that we have. Um, you know, God's mercy is so great. In fact, we got to keep going to the sacraments because that helps strengthen our trust. Um, you know, Jesus in the garden, um, you know, he he even said, you know, his his act of trust in the Father. Um, you know, this is powerful stuff. You know, and um, we we have to follow in this path. And trust is the way by which we do that. And so, you know, love, uh, faith is an active, trust is an active faith. And, um, and we just have to trust no matter what we've done. And, um, you know, Jesus said, I desire trust, you know, and that's why in the image, his left foot is stepping forward. And um, we have to realize that that's what God's giving us is that opportunity to reach out to him. Um, you know, my sister is a good example. Um, you know, her husband left her um, after 24 years of marriage. And um, he left her for another woman. And later, my sister found out that they were um, in the car one day, my ex-brother-in-law and his new girlfriend. And they pulled up to a, radio, uh, a railroad crossing where a train was coming. And this woman, at the last moment, all of a sudden dove in front of the train. And it sliced her in half. And my sister, now this is the woman that ruined my sister's marriage. And my sister had every right to probably say, well, you know, that's too bad, but she got what she deserved or, you know, I'm glad she's out of our lives now. But no, my sister didn't. My sister prays for this woman every single day. And I was amazed by that. And I said, Pam, how do you do that? And she says, I trust in God because she needs prayers more than anybody you know, she ruined a marriage and she took her life. But I trust God will have mercy on her. If I, the one that she hurt, forgive her. So if you are lacking forgiveness of anyone, if you are holding on or harboring a grudge, or you are holding on to something, forgive let it go. And my sister said, I found a new freedom. Um, a new freedom. And how powerful is that? You know, um, you know, back to, to Cana, um, if, you know, Jesus says, trust is the vessel by which all grace is received. You know, Mary gave us, she waited with trust at Cana. Um, you know, she invites us to allow the emptiness of our own lives, our hearts, to be filled. Um, but do you know also God trusts us? You know, in marriage, he trusts your spouse to you. He trusts your children to you. Um, marrying someone means that you have each decided to become a bridge builder between yourself and, you know, your spouse to get them to heaven. Um, and so, you know, if they annoy you or you get aggravated by them, they can help get you to heaven through patience and virtue. Um, but this is how Jesus entrusts himself to us is through the Eucharist. He makes himself compromised in a piece of bread and he takes a piece of bread and becomes him. And so that's why divine mercy is not just about our devotion to God, but it's about God's devotion to us. And, um, you know, this blessed Xavier Silo said, none of the damned souls will ever be lost because their sin was so great, but because their trust was too small. And that is what we need to understand, is God's mercy is best received when we trust. And so... 
very much important stuff. Um, very important. Um, okay, I see a question. Um, how do I begin to evangelize those who have left the church and to stress that it's not too late to receive God's mercy? Okay. God's mercy can be received at any time, but again, we have to open ourselves up to receive it. If we are not open to receiving that trust, if we depend on ourselves and not on God, then we're not going to receive that grace. Remember the cross. When God's will crosses my will, I have to take God's will. And, 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 and people say, well, how, how do I do that, Father? Accept the help God gives you. What did, what did uh, Jesus do to John at the cross? He gave the gift of his mother. He said, take her into your home. And we know God gave, Jesus gave, him, gave her as a spiritual mother, not a natural mother, because John's real mother was right there at the cross. And so um, Salome, it says the mother of the sons of Zebedee was there at the cross. So John was right there with his own mother at the cross. And here Jesus gives them his mother. So no matter who we are, we can use that gift of a mother. So how do you trust God? Accept the gift he gives you. The promise of a savior. Here's your savior. And the gift of a mother. Mother Mary. You do that, you're on your way to be in that vessel by which all grace is received. And that vessel is called trust. All right. So very, very important stuff. And I think, you know, what people don't understand about divine mercy is it doesn't mean that we can do whatever we want. God is justice, just like he is his mercy. But God gives us the opportunity to start again. And, you know, what is divine mercy? Divine mercy is loving the unlovable and forgiving the unforgivable. It's basically when you see suffering and you reach out like God did to us. He saw our suffering in the garden and he reached out to us. And he gave us the chance to accept his help. His help of the promise of a savior and the gift of a mother. And so to me, you can't get any more important than accepting that help God gives you and what's one of the big ways that God helps us? The church, right? The church. This is the biggest way God helps us because he gives us guaranteed grace in the sacraments. You know, um, we know God is present in the sacraments. Uh, some of you might have heard me tell the story before when um, I went up to the Indian village in Canada right after I was ordained. And it was Corpus Christi. And I was doing a procession. And I had the monstrance. So I'm holding the monstrance like this. And here's the Blessed Sacrament. And I'm walking through this Indian village. And many of the Indians up there, Native Americans, had lost their faith. And they weren't going to church. And I went up to this Indian village. They hadn't had a mass in four years. And I went up to this Indian village and I did a mass on Corpus Christi and we were doing a, a procession with the Blessed Sacrament. And at the end of that procession, as we started walking through the neighborhood and I was blessing everybody with the monstrance, there was two young Indian men. And they didn't like what I was doing. And they tried to block me and they were swearing at me and at the Eucharist. They were yelling absurdities and obscenities. And they were basically telling me to get out of there. It was purely evil. And I kept holding on to the monstrance and walking forward. And finally, they stood in front of me and they tried to block me. And I'm holding the monstrance with the shaft. And this Indian tried to reach up and grab it. He wanted to throw it to the ground and desecrate it. And I'm holding the monstrance, and he reaches up to grab it. And just as he grabs it, he puts his hand around it, and his hand flew off. And he started screaming. And he's looking at his hand, and he's screaming, My hand, my hand, in, in the Cree language. That's the Indian's Cree. 
and the monstrance had burned him, had completely burned his hand. Now that is true presence of Christ. You know, so many Eucharistic miracles show us that the, the host is really human heart tissue. The blood is really human blood. Um, we have everything in, 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 in the sacraments. That's what makes our faith different than any others. And so praise be to God that we have this opportunity to receive guaranteed grace at Holy Communion, guaranteed grace in the confessional, guaranteed forgiveness of sin in baptism. You can't do better. So get back to the sacraments when you can. And, um, and I'm going to be out in, uh, in the Philippines. So please spread the word if you have any family or loved ones. I'm going out for the month of September. I'll be near Manila and, um, and uh, different places. And I'm going to be doing some priest retreats and some bishop retreats. But if you have family in Manila, please let me know. Um, God bless you, and, and, and I hope to see some of your family out there. Uh, I see there's another question. Father Chris, I'm praying for healing for my five-month-old niece who is critically ill with liver, liver failure. Doctors are giving up on her. I trust God will heal her, but I'm also so struggling to balance with God's will for her. How should I balance my trust in the will of God? Okay, that's a great question. Does God want this little five-month-old girl to die of liver failure? Ah, no, Father, she doesn't. He doesn't. Well, wait a minute. Isn't everything under the providence of God? Doesn't everything, only those things that God says can happen, happen? Which means that God, in his providence wanted this little girl to die of liver. If she does, we're going to pray she doesn't. But how do you reconcile that? How is God being God if he's going to let this happen? All right, here's the answer. In God's ordained will, he doesn't want sickness, death, or suffering. He doesn't want that. That's why Jesus asked for the Father to take the cup of suffering from him in the garden. And in his, per, in his ordained will, he doesn't want it. But in his permissive will, he allows it. Because many times he'll bring a greater good out of even the worst evil. And so what greater good could come out of this? Well, maybe you got a little five-month-old girl in heaven now praying for you. We pray that she'll be healed. But we know God will never let her be lost. Will never let her be lost. And if he does take her home early, she's a great prayer warrior for us down here. So she's saved. We will be saved through her prayers, we hope. Whereas if she wouldn't, and she would have grown up and been an adult, she might have fallen away. You know, we don't know why God does things. He does things only according to the ways he knows. We'll never know until we get to heaven ourselves someday. And we'll, he'll explain everything that. <laughs> uh, so very good, very good. So any questions about divine mercy and the importance of trust in the life of St. Faustina? You know, she was, you know, um, Jesus told her that, um, you know, the very special gift um, that we have only comes to us through trust. And trust is a living faith. What do we mean by that? Abraham, we call him the father of faith, but trust is a living faith. So when he lived his faith, he was trusting. What did he do? God asked him to kill his son, the son by which he promised all these descendants. So when he went to kill the son, if that was me, I would have said, wait a minute, God. How are you expecting me to kill this boy when you promised me through him all these descendants? What are you doing here? And basically, he didn't do that. Abraham went to sacrifice his son, and then God stopped it. But the key is that Abraham 
trusted. Basically, I don't know how you're going to do it, Lord, even if you got to raise this little guy to the dead, from the dead, but I trust, even if I kill him, per your command, everything's going to be okay. That's the story of Abraham. And that's the story that in many ways is based on trust. Because trust is accepting the help that somebody gave us. Abraham accepted the help God gave him. And then living that hope, that help, living it. And so let us never, ever, ever forget that this whole message of divine mercy is not possible. Because it's all grace. That's not possible if we don't open ourselves up to receive that grace. Very good. All right. Next question. How can you explain the seven-year-old child difference between a rosary and the Divine Mercy Chaplet? Okay. You know, they go to Mass, right? Tell them that the rosary is like reading the Bible. And in the Mass, the first part of Mass, we read the Bible. We hear about the stories of Jesus and Mary. That's what the rosary is. The mysteries are stories of Jesus and Mary. But then the second part of Mass, we offer sacrifice, Holy Communion. That's like the chaplain. Eternal Father, I offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity. It's very beautiful. So that is how we want to be able to think of the chaplet and the rosary. All right, Father, tell us more about the consecration of Jesus through Mary. All right, there's different ways you can consecrate. Uh, St. Louis de Montfort had the original way. Father Mike Gately did 33 days. But basically, consecration is what trust is. Consecration is accepting the help that God offers you. And when God offers me the help of Mary, and I follow her, I'm trusting him. So when I entrust myself to her, I'm putting myself in her hands. I'll give you a quick example. When I go to pray each day, there's too many people I know to pray for on each individual. I can't sit down and pray for each person who asks me to pray for them every day. There's too many people. I can't do it. But if I say, Mary, I'm offering up to you today all my rosaries, all my chaplets, all my divine office, the Holy Mass, um, my meditation, my scripture reading. And I say, okay, Mary, I'm putting it in your hand. Basically, you distribute the grace. Jesus told St. Faustina to Mary, um, basically, Jesus said, our tradition is Mary is co-mediatrix and co-redemptress. Is it she's co-mediator of that grace she will help give that grace so if you pray and you play, place everything you pray for in mary's hands you say mary you distribute it you know what it's like and i know we're running out of time here but it's like a stockbroker what's a stockbroker a financial broker you give your money to them and you let them invest it you let them take your money and build something with it well, that's what you're doing with your prayers in Mary and consecration. You see, Mary, I'm putting all these prayers in your hands. Do something with it. Mary, distribute those graces how best you see fit. And basically, that's Mary in consecration. She can help distribute your prayers. She can help show you to heaven. Nobody knows the son better than her, his mom. And that's what Jesus gives us in Mary, a gift to be able to know him. So, you know, um, in the Old Testament, who the peasants went to when they wanted to talk to the king, they didn't go to the king. They went to the king's mother, the queen. Because the queen was not the wife of the king, the queen was the mother. So that's how we do it. All right. Father, can I consecrate others to Mama Mary? Okay. They have to say yes, but you can certainly suggest it to them. Pray for them, suggest it to them, help them see the important part. And that is a very great gift you can give somebody. They have to ultimately say yes, but you can definitely help them to see the importance. Okay? 
All right, very good. Any other questions, anybody? This are, these are good. How are we doing, Mitzi? Oh, they're firing questions at you, Father. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very good. So do we All have right. any other questions, guys? All right. Okay. So if anybody wants to know the entire Bible and the Diary of St. Faustina, wrapped up and summarized in one word, it's trust. Why is the Bible trust? Because we ran away from God after the fall in the garden. And God wants us to trust him to come back to him. Why is the diary about trust? Because Jesus told St. Faustina, it's the vessel by which all grace is received. We want to get to heaven. We need grace. And if we're going to get grace, you've got to capture it. That is trust. So the whole message of the Bible and the diary of St. Faustina is trust. All right. All right. Very good. How do we re we pray the chaplet? Some do it so fast. Yeah. Make sure that you're you know you're 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 not saying the words but praying the words you know the problem most of us have when we pray we're not praying the words we're saying the words and so let them dump dump into your soul uh very 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 powerful what do you say to other believers from other denominations who try to discredit us okay just let them know that remember there was only one Christian church for 1500 years and that was the Catholic church you know Jesus came to earth to start a church and he said I'm going to start a church and he did so my question is do you think Jesus would come to earth to start a church and then say I'm going to get it wrong for 1500 years until Martin Luther gets it right no way no way He's going to make sure that that church is the right one from the beginning. And that's why our church goes back 1,500 years before anybody else's. All right? Catholics um, praying the rosary. Yes. Do not pray the rosary too fast where you're just rattling the words. Remember, the rosary is not a bunch of Hail Marys. The rosary is a meditation on Scripture. The, the, the mysteries, you're meditating on the assumption, you're meditating on the ascension, you're meditating, you know, on the presentation of the temple, the scourging at the pillar, the visitation. These are all things that you are thinking about as you're praying the Hail Marys as background music. The rosary is not just Hail Marys. The rosary is background music. Or excuse me. The rosary is mysteries that you're thinking of. The Hail Marys are just background music. And so that's 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 important stuff. Um, do not just say it, but pray it. Okay, you can't get more important than that, because if we don't, we're um, we're just seeing a bunch of words. And the rosary is not just repeating a bunch of words. No matter what our non-Catholic non brother tell us, we have to realize that it's engaging and meditating on the mysteries. This is why Mary asked us in the first five Saturdays to meditate 15 minutes on one or more of the mysteries. Yeah. Because that's how we let it sink into our soul. All right. Some denominations ask why we pray to Mary instead of going directly to Jesus Christ. All right. Remember what I just said about the king? When the peasants wanted to go to the king, they didn't go directly to the king. They weren't worthy. They went to his mother, the queen. Now, remember, to pray doesn't mean worship. If, 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 if you look at what pray means, to pray means to ask. And so we pray to Mary means we are asking Mary to help us. She's got more pull with Jesus than I do. Why would you want to not go to her? She has more pull with her son than I do. So you should go to Mary. Now I can help. I can do some prayers. But the big point to remember is, when you go to Mary, she's got the closest handle on who Jesus is, what makes him tick, what he wants to hear from us. And that is important. 
All right. How do we instill trust in young adults who have gone astray? Have masses said for them. Have masses. They don't even have to know it. The rosary is not really about Mary, but is... Okay, and then it got cut off. Yes, the rosary can be. Some of the mysteries are scriptural about Mary. First chapter of Luke, 28 to 58, is all about Mary. The, you know, the whole kitchen sink. And so let us realize that, you know, Mary does play an important role. And so um, very, very much so. All right. The rosary is not really about it, but the life. Yes, it's about the life of Jesus. That's correct. All right. Well, God bless everybody. I know we're at our limit here at 5 o'clock. God bless all of you. Um, there it says, thank you, Father. May God continue to bless you. You too. Uh, drive when, I'm praying while driving the rosary or driving my car seeing the rosary. Very good. God bless you guys for always keeping your prayers top priority. Well, Father Chris, um, we want to thank you. With all that you already do, we are truly blessed that um, you have made the time to join us in person for this recollection. Thank you. And, um, you know, the Divine Mercy is a devotion that many of us embrace. And um, there have been many a years where we trudged up the hill in rain, in sleet and snow. And uh, we know that the work that you're doing in propagating it is truly making a difference. And, um, you know, throughout your talk, you touched on so many elements, but we take heart in the promise that even when we are immersed in sin, in God's mercy, you know, it is always bigger and greater than any sin. And you said a true confession wipes the slate clean. Yep. And, um, we all God also asks us to trust in him and so we should take his word for that and um, he knows what's best for us so father we will continue to follow you and pray for your ministry Thank God bless you. you and on behalf of missionary families of Christ we thank you once again and thank you everybody and may Almighty God bless you the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit amen and God bless we hope that you all will continue to trust in God's mercy. Amen, Father. Thank you. We'll be in touch. Amen. So um, that gets us to the end of uh, today's uh, activities. Uh, there are so many things that um, we picked up from all three speakers and um, I do hope that you made notes because I was scribbling all over the place and um, you know from Sister Gaudia's talk to Father Jim and Father Chris Aylar a lot of things to unpack in all the things that they said um, so maybe tonight you know those are points of reflection for all of you and um, we hope to pick up where we left off today tomorrow we start at 9 30 and this is eastern standard time uh it is what it's uh 8 30 uh, central uh, time and it is uh, 6 30 pacific time